Taylor James Johnson here for That Bigfoot Show. Yes, that one. And today is a very, very special episode. As you can see, we're here at, at the Alamo, uh, not its basement. And no, there was not a Bigfoot sighting at the Alamo, but one of the heroes of the Alamo, Davy Crockett, had a possible Sasquatch encounter on his way through Texas. So we are here at the Alamo to honor Davy Crockett and talk about his uh, possible Sasquatch encounter. This happened in 1836, the same year as the Battle of the Alamo. So one of the last things that Davy Crockett did was write a letter to his brother-in-law about this strange encounter. So we're gonna dive deep and find out what this could have been. Is it real? Do I believe? Should I believe? Should you believe? We'll find out on that Bigfoot show, Davy Crockett edition. Follow me. Are we, are we allowed to bring cameras in the Alamo? Let's, let's just do it and, and if they say no, uh, just run, okay? Alrighty, so here we are at the Alamo and I just happened to run into cryptozoologist, author, Ken Gerhard. And uh, Ken, I have some questions for you about Davy Crockett. Oh, wow. Okay. And his, uh, his Bigfoot encounter. Sounds good. Let's talk. So I'm Ken Gerhard, widely recognized cryptozoologist and Bigfoot researcher. And one of the lesser known tales in Bigfoot lore is that involving the great American icon, Davy Crockett, hero of the Alamo, statesman, frontiersman, and all around badass, really. So according to a letter that Crockett wrote to his brother-in-law, Abner Bergen, about six months before the Alamo, he was kind of trekking along with his colleague, Will Patton, through some of the thick piney woods of East Texas, somewhere near where Davy Crockett National Forest is located today. And he was sitting down on a log and he claims that suddenly a figure just kind of appeared right in front of him and according to his description it was the shape and shade of a large ape man about three foundlings tall and he said it was covered in hair he said it had small spindly eyes large broken teeth and uh yeah it was just basically sounded like a bigfoot or a sasquatch So yeah, this is one of my favorite Bigfoot encounters because it just brings everything together. And when I mean everything, I mean cryptozoology, history, mythology, nature, science, the paranormal, the, the, the maybe even the psychological. There is an aspect to each and every one of those things in this possible Sasquatch encounter. And can you just imagine Davy Crockett, legend, and Sasquatch, legend, coming together. Like that, that is, it doesn't get any more legendary than that. That is, that is, you can't, you can't make this up. That's why it's, that's why I choose to believe this because it's so, it's so perfect. And even though I live in San Antonio, home of the Alamo, this story really isn't that popular. <laughs> uh, I actually came across it in a book written by Jason McLean. I've got that book right here, Metroplex Monsters. It's about the sightings, encounters, and the history of, of weird things in the uh, Dallas-Fort Worth area. And uh, that's where this happened. So I sat down with Jason to learn a little bit more about this legendary encounter. And so he, he sits on this log that's fallen over. He's got his food out. He's just taking his hatchet and just whacking on this poor little log. And this creature, he describes as being almost seven feet tall. And it, 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 he says it sort of materializes like a mist. It warns him to leave this fort that he, if he values his life, he'll leave. And then just as soon as it came, it disappears. It just takes that step back into the forest and vanishes into nothing. It completely freaks him out. Now, the really weird part of the story is that Crockett also described that this figure, this creature, actually spoke to him and warned him of the impending tragedy that was going to come within a few months at the Alamo. Yeah, could you imagine just sitting on a, on a log like, like I am here, just 
enjoying a, a, a biscuit. I don't have anything to, to eat, but I, I'm just gonna pretend like in Hook. And, and then suddenly this ape-like man, <laughs> creature thing, just appears right in front of you and warns you that there's impending doom and you need to get the heck out of out of Dodge or well Texas. And I'm sure Davy Crockett has seen a lot of wild and crazy things in his day, but to see a a Sasquatch like creature, possible paranormal demon thing, come out of nowhere and give him this this message of, of doom telepathically. Like that that is that is beyond wild and the, the the king of the wild frontier didn't even know what to make of it but he did not heed that warning and continued on on his way to fight for freedom at the alamo so let's uh let's go back to the alamo you know it's a really kind of weird story i think the interesting thing is that that particular area and i've done research in that region of texas and in fact in davy crockett national forest looking for evidence of bigfoot there is a tradition uh, and history of Bigfoot accounts from that part of Texas. So, you know, did Davy Crockett in fact encounter a Sasquatch? Well, if so, I think it adds kind of an interesting and really fabulous chapter to the Davy Crockett saga. It's a controversial story amongst the Bigfooters because some people say, well, that can't possibly be a Bigfoot. It's talking to him, it's materializing, it's disappearing. Others say, well, there's a ton of conversation about Bigfoot doing similar materials. Um, I think there's actually a, a sort of a midpoint, which is, sure, Davy Crockett said it talks, he said it disappears, but is he being flamboyant with his language? Is that merely the emotion that he felt out from this, that it was a warning, that it wasn't the creature actually speaking to him the way I'm speaking to you, but rather was giving him this, this emotion of it's time to get the heck out of here. I shall now read the letter that Davy Crockett wrote to his brother-in-law about this very strange encounter. William and I were pushing through some thicket, clearing the way, when I sat down to mop my brow. Oh, and my cat is gonna help read this too, thank you. Yeah, I didn't grow a tail, I have a, it's a cat. I sat down for a spell, watching as William made his, no, don't, this isn't, this. I sat and watched for a spell watching as William made his good and fine progress. I removed my boots and sat with my rations, thanking the afternoon a fine time to lunch. As the birds whistled and chirped, and I ate my small and meager ration, I tapped my axe upon the opposite end of the felled tree I rested upon. Tap, tap. Whether it was the axe's disturbance or possibly the heat of the high sun which caused an apparition to slowly form in front of my eyes, I know not. As a Christian man, I swear to you, Abe, that's his brother-in-law, brother-in-law Abe, that what spirit came upon me was the shape and shade of a large ape man. The likes we might expect among the more bellicose and hostile Indian tribes of the territories. Covered in wild hair with small and needling eyes, large broken rows of teeth, and the height of three fondlings, just over eight feet tall. I spit upon the ground the bread I was eating. He, he did a spit take. <laughs> the monster then addressed a warning to me, Abner. It told me to return from Texas, to flee this fort and to abandon this lost cause. When I began to question this, the creature spread upon the wind like the morning steam swirls off a frog pond. I swear to you, Abner, brother-in-law Abner, that whatever meat or sausage disagreed with me that afternoon, I forswore all beef and hog for a day or so afterward. So there you have it. From, from the mouth of Davy Crockett, and here's a, here's a lovely illustration from the author, Jason McLean. And yeah, 
What an incredible encounter. And, and a poetic one to boot. Now, what most people don't realize about Texas is that there are a lot of Bigfoot sightings in the state, but the vast majority of them are in kind of that region of East Texas where you've got these really thick piney wood areas. It's not like out here in San Antonio where we have a lot of kind of scrubby mesquite trees and stuff. It's really dense, thick brush and, you know, exactly the type of habitat that you might expect to find some large, elusive creature like Bigfoot. Interesting, because, yeah, there, in this encounter, in this letter, he, he claims that this, this creature appears and vanishes. Yeah. And, and do, you, do you think that's maybe just this creature kind of uh, dipping into the, into the thicket, into the brush? Or do you think he actually vanished? Or what, what, he, what, what do you think David Crockett meant by that? Well, according to the story, Crockett at the time, you know, he'd been hiking through Texas, cutting through heavy brush. It was the middle of the day, the sun was hot, so presumably he was kind of tired, maybe a bit famished because he just sat down for lunch. So we can't discount the possibility that maybe he was a little bit dizzy or disoriented. He even said, like, he had some bad meat and maybe the... Yeah. Like, maybe it was the meat disagreeing with him. And yeah, he mentioned there. that. Maybe there was some, you know, he, he acknowledged himself that maybe he imagined this whole mm -hmm. thing. But it's interesting that he used the description ape man. That's not something that you would yeah. like, typically expect to hear in an account from the 1830s, not I don't at think. All. Ape man, yeah. Yeah, that, that, that was kind of weird. And, uh, you know, as far as, like, the, the alleged appearance and vanishing, now, many Bigfoot eyewitnesses I've interviewed, Taylor, have said that Bigfoot has this almost magical ability to appear and disappear. Yeah. I personally attribute that to kind of an adaptation that, you know, Bigfoot is so good at eluding us and being seen and it recognizes that we're its greatest threat, yeah. that maybe it's just really good at kind of, you know, obscuring itself, camouflaging itself behind trees, disappearing into the brush. Davy Crockett Head was very, very flowery with his language, so we really can't say that what he's writing about, what he's recording, is exactly what happened. It might be that that's what happened. But even he sort of questions what it is that he encountered. He said that he stopped eating his lunch and he didn't eat any uh, uh, any of the meats that he had carried with him for two or three days, fearing that he had been poisoned by the food that he was taking with him. So it's as strange an encounter as anyone's, in, as anyone's recorded, and it's recorded by this famous woodsman, this man, this pioneer, this father of Texas, and it's an amazing story. I'm not necessarily an advocate of these theories, but there are people in the Bigfoot field that talk about this telepathic mind speak that Bigfoot has. Yeah, that, yeah. You know, that people have claimed that they've actually heard Bigfoot in their head communicating with them. So, again, I don't necessarily think that's the case per se, but it does have that kind of an interesting twist to the whole story that he claims that this Bigfoot was like almost yeah. as if he was there like a like a doppelganger, a warning, you know, that hey avoid this particular danger that moves ahead. Yeah, and then not too long later, he, you know, met his, his demise here at the Alamo uh, as a hero. True hero. Uh, yep. True hero. There he is, Davy Crockett, uh, king of the wild frontier and Bigfoot eyewitness and hero of the Alamo and a Disney character also. Uh, he's everything, uh, just, like, just like Bigfoot. Uh, the, the dad? It's Bigfoot! Could you back up a bit, Mr. Foot? Uh, you're out of focus. Yeah, he's a man's man. Yeah. And obviously he was an amazing outdoorsman, hunter, tracker, and so forth, but apparently he was also an extremely articulate orator and communicator. Yeah. So he was he had it all, man. He was a pretty sharp guy, but he also could survive in the wilderness. So the perfect Bigfoot witness. Yeah. Like, a guy who, who was knowledgeable, had the experience, and was open-minded to, to this sort of thing, and was articulate enough to share his his views to, to the world. If his account is true, mm -hmm. um, then it would certainly rank as the first ever Bigfoot account, but thereby bypassing one year the story of the wild man of the Navidad, which was a okay. Bigfoot-like creature that was sighted down on the 
near Sublime, Texas, in the Lower Navidad River in 1837. And that was like a, a year later? A year later. Hmm. So, uh, you know, that if nothing else, it illustrates that Bigfoot accounts in Texas date back a very long time. Wow. Wow. Well, uh, thank you, Davy Crockett. Uh, thanks for... Thank, thanks for everything for, that you've done for Texas and the Bigfoot community. <laughs> My two favorite things. So, uh, absolutely. Thanks again. I said, you all can go to hell. <laughs> I'm going to Texas. Yeah. <laughs> well, there you have it. This has been that Bigfoot show. Yes, that one with a very special episode about Davy Crockett's encounter with a possible Sasquatch. Now, was this saying uh, an animal? Was it in his mind? Was it some sort of paranormal, demonic spirit thing? Um, or, or was was it just some bad meat that disagreed with him that made him hallucinate? <laughs> We'll we'll never know, but that's that's what makes the story so interesting. So I just want to thank Jason. I just want to thank uh, Ken, and I, I want to thank Davy Crockett, and I want to thank that Sasquatch for appearing to him, so that we have such a cool story of two legendary legends coming together to make the ultimate legend. So yeah, this has been That Bigfoot Show, and I've been your host, Taylor James Johnson. If you have uh, any interesting, uh, wonderful encounters or stories about, you know, this particular subject matter, comment your comment in the comments below, and we'd love to, we'd love to hear from you. So yeah, this has been That Bigfoot Show. Yeah, that one.